Okay, we're here at Darmstadt. It is so cold out. My hands are completely frozen, which is a great way to start a climbing session. Nonetheless, we are gonna be doing a mock comp today. So we're gonna go through some competition tactics. Today I have some thin skin, so I'm actually using Rhino Performance. This is not an ad at all. It takes away a little bit of the like sweatiness, so uh, liquid chalk stays on longer, normal chalk stays on longer, and I find it's good for performance. Amazing. What's interesting is in uh, North America, a lot of the jugs are like made of plastic. In Germany, and I guess Europe as well, a lot of the jugs are these like, um, almost like porcelain. The downside of that is they're cold. Yeah, they're not very fun to warm up on. I'm always looking for like trying to get on the plastic ones, but there's way too many porcelain ones here in Europe. I reserve my off the wall movement, stretching, warm up or competition. Today I'm doing it because yeah, it's a mock comp and I'm kind of showing you what I do in a normal comp. It's also because I'm really cold and it helps me warm up a little bit faster. But you also notice I only do dynamic stretching. The higher risk of injury if you are static stretching. So if you're just holding a stretch to warm up, that's not a good way to warm up. You want to get your muscles going. So I like to move in and out of like a forearm stretch or a leg stretch, a uh, hamstring, all that sort of stuff. A lot of times at competitions or at World Cups especially, you only get a spray wall. So I like to try to do that as much as possible in my warm ups, especially when I'm doing mock pumps. That said, I only have two more sessions here before I leave for Canada permanently. So I'm actually gonna do a little bit more main sets today to warm up. So I just realized I left my chalk at home. So it's just liquid chalk for the day. We pros aren't as put together as we may look. You can always tell how much I care about something based on how high my ponytail is. That's like as high as it goes. Okay, warm up complete. My toes are still numb, but I don't think that's going away anytime soon. When it comes to comps, sometimes there's a long period of time between when you've done your warm up and when your competition starts. I force myself to wait at least five minutes before I start my mock comp. But honestly, at World Cup, sometimes it can be even 25 minutes before you're on the wall from when you leave the isolation area. So um, I take it easy on myself in mock comps, but uh, it's good to keep in mind that it really forces me to, to take a second. You also notice that here and there, I like to throw in my MP3 player. Again, at competitions, you aren't allowed Bluetooth enabled devices. So that's actually a new rule in the IFSC this year. It sucks. This is good to throw into training every once in a while because it really gets you into the mindset of like, I'm at a World Cup right now. The more I train that, the more comfortable I am at World Cups. So in Boulder 1 here, I am going to demonstrate some classic Matty competition tactics. To start off, I sequence my boulder for around 30 seconds. Um, I try not to get on the wall much later than that. In this case, uh, I actually had to use the timer on the recording, the video recording, as my timer because I didn't have a second phone. So I didn't exactly know what time it was. But um, in general, I kind of get on the wall around 30 seconds anyway. Here I am getting towards the end and I'm still figuring it out. You know, this is a classic first attempt kind of attempt. Like I'm kind of figuring it out on the wall a little bit still. You want to try to get as little as that as, uh, as possible. You want to be as confident as you can possibly be on your first attempt. But 
it's hard when you just figure out moves. So I went for the finish hold there and I dropped it. So the, this is the decision point. I am very confident that I can get it on my next try. So I'm actually going to wait down the clock. That way I can give myself the best chance to actually send this boulder on my next attempt. Since I fell at the finish hold, you know, I did almost everything right. So I am sure that I can just do it the next try. So the tip of the day is when you're in a competition and you, s and you fall at the last move of a boulder and you're confident that you can get it on your next attempt, just give yourself some rest. Give yourself some extra rest to really give that attempt your everything. Now, unfortunately, my next attempt, I miss the uh, hand flip. So I unfortunately have a very awkward amount of time left. I've got about a minute left. So it's a tricky situation because you don't want to tie yourself out on the first boulder by, you know, doing attempts right up until the timer ends. But I only have three boulders to do today and I was pretty close and it didn't take too much energy. So I decided to put one more attempt on it. Unfortunately, you see I'm slipping all over it. I put another attempt on here and uh, we have about the same result. Like it just, my, my power is gone. And at this point you don't want to ruin the rest of your comp. So that is it for this boulder. But barring foot slips and dry fires, the weighted down the clock method is my go-to method for situations like this. So boulder two is a slab. And uh, slabs of course take a lot more time to attempt. So in general, I like to get on my slabs um, a little bit faster. In this case though, uh, it was a little bit cryptic. So I, I took an extra second to figure out the beta. Also, depending on how confident I am in the boulder, sometimes you look at the boulder and you're like, oh, I can top this. So it was, this was the case. So I took an extra second to really look at it to make sure I could get a good flash on it. And we are going to mess around a little and then we're gonna fall. So yeah, that, that happens sometimes. It's important not to get frustrated by things like this in competition. Like, yeah, we're trying to keep our attempts as low as possible, but with slabs especially, there's a lot of foot slips going around. So it's it's hard to get a really good flash of a, of a slab. And if you do, you're probably gonna be in a really good position going into the next boulders. So I tend not to care too much about foot slipping on slabs. One or two foot slips on a boulder that has a lot of foot slips is probably not gonna tear you down too much. And then now this is technically our first attempt going into this uh, crux sequence. So uh, you'll notice when I do slabs, I take my time and I really feel out all the moves I can possibly do. When I'm feeling secure, like my feet are good and um, I'm fairly confident in my technique, I will take my time and really figure out how to move through the sequence. So this is the other side of the coin. Like a lot of people do fall on slabs because of their footwork or the bad feet. But if you're able to make your attempts count and really figure out the body position to move through your slab, you can get them done faster. And since they take a long time to attempt in the first place, it is unlikely you're gonna have enough time to put two really long attempts within your five minutes. So it's best if you make the most of your first attempt and really feel out all the positions to move through your slab effectively on the first try even if it means messing around a little bit on the wall. So yeah, maybe a little bit of funky beta. My foot's maybe not in the way that the resetter wanted it to be, but even in comps, you are able to break beta. Um, it doesn't happen that much, especially in World Cups, but it is plenty possible. So don't count yourself out just because you know you're kind of not going for the, the typical beta. Because sometimes it just works out and it just works better for your body type. And then finally, of course, we've got third boulder. So this one right away, I'm looking at, at it and I'm like, okay, this is like a power boulder. So I'm not gonna wanna spend more than two attempts on it. So with that in mind, we're going to sequence really well so that we don't take too many attempts on it. We wanna have the beta right from the start so we can just get right to it and not waste any power. Yeah, in this case, I'm really scoping out the whole thing. Just make sure we get all the way sequencing to the finish hold. Sometimes, uh, especially in lead, I was always guilty of picking a spot on the route that I think I'd get to and not sequencing too thoroughly past it. So I try to apply my mistakes from lead into bouldering and make sure I sequence the whole boulder as well, especially when it's like a power boulder and you are, you know, wasting power by the second that you stay on the wall. You don't want to get to a part where you don't know what the beta is. Now, unfortunately, I'm about to get a part where I didn't sequence too well. You'll see I'm kind of looking around for a foot. I guess I thought there might be something there or something. So. I find I'm, I'm bad at sequencing where my feet go. So tip of the day number two is look for your feet, especially on power boulders. 
But with all that said, that is our mock comp today. I hope this was super helpful for you. And if you enjoy this type of content, definitely subscribe to our channel. Leave us some comments on what you like, what you don't like, and help us grow Richardson's Climbing.